tech industry is under attack. A backbone of our economy is burning trillions of dollars, firing thousands of employees, and threatening all of our investments. Bankers and politicians tell us not to worry while they deal with war and inflation. But the truth is our society is changing. Some of these tech giants will absolutely vanish. I needed to understand if this is the tech bubble 2.0, and what I found out left me feeling uneasy. Welcome to the Darwinism of the tech sector. This year, the top 100 tech firms lost $2.8 trillion with a T. Billionaires have lost ungodly amounts of net worth. And while some call this a market adjustment, others think that's just a sugar-coated way to say, get your life jackets. So is this like the 90s? That decade gave us some amazing things. Britney Spears, Game Boy, and the dot-com bubble, one of the largest collapses ever caused by easy money and speculation. Back then, the US economy was booming, and the Fed was in the hands of a fellow named Alan Greenspan. You might have heard of him. He designed the modern US financial system and happens to be one of the people blamed for the collapses of 2000 and 2008. Thanks, Alan. Basically, Greenspan pushed super low interest rates, flooded the markets with easy money, and started this investing frenzy already sounds pretty familiar. And in all this, the internet came along. By the mid-90s, people realized that the internet might just be the greatest invention since the wheel. It was madness. Startups were launched like bootleg fireworks, one IPO after another, shooting up into the sky, creating this marketing spectacle, promising riches and an exciting future. But the problem was just that. Many of these companies were literally built to advertise built to push up share prices. Monetization, profits, and sound business models really didn't matter if you could just drum up some excitement. And boy, did it work. So just two months after hitting the 4,000 mark, NASDAQ is already challenging the 5,000 mark. The NASDAQ was on steroids, going from 1,095 to over 5K in March of 2000. And then... Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere, essentially, down by 4 5%. We're down over 16%. Dow, at the same time, has fallen about 18%. The stock market is now down 21%. The economy crashed, wiping out so much wealth that it took 15 years to reach that level again. So the question is, are we destined for this to happen again? If we overlay the market from 2000 and now, it looks like it could be the start of a collapse. Now, real quick, I need to tell you about my membership group, Finova. There you get access to additional videos, successful trade signals, and live coaching calls every single day. The type of content you can't get anywhere else. So it's kind of like my OnlyFans, except instead of trying to strip, we're buying the dip. We're talking ETFs, not DTFs. Basically, it's like the stock market, not the cop. You know what I'm saying. Okay, we're in 2022 and we got bad news. A few things look just like the 90s. And no, I'm not talking about Birkenstocks or choker necklaces. We just exited a period of cheap money, speculation, and massive growth that brought the markets to unprecedented levels. And trust me, that's not a good thing. In fact, the pandemic accelerated all of this. It disrupted entire economies and the global GDP dropped by over 3.4%, burning $2 trillion. And despite all this, for tech stocks, it was peaches and cream, baby. Powell and the Fed did what they do best. They brought interest rates down to essentially nothing, flooding the markets with easy cash. And then the US government pumped about $5 trillion into the economy, three times what they spent with the entire 2008 recession. Now, all these measures seem to be the best choice at the time, but when the economy is basically drugged, Sooner or later, you're gonna wake up in a stranger's bed with an overdrafted bank account. And we can't forget there's also a critical social element here. The pandemic changed the way we live. People relied more on the internet and started dreaming of working from a tropical island. That happened to me. And this was gold for tech stocks. It meant more e-commerce, more Zoom meetings, Netflix, Spotify, OnlyFans. And these companies rallied, expanding offers and services. But deep down, it was generating a monster. The pandemic was looked at as a time of struggle, but the reality is with so much money pumping into the system, many people actually had more money than ever before. You probably personally know someone who made more on unemployment during that period than they ever made in their entire life. And there was only so much you could do with your money when you're locked inside. So what do you do with it? You invested, of course, and as a result, housing, stocks, and cryptos all pump, threatening a massive bubble. Now the question is, is it gonna pop? Did it already pop? Well, we have a combination of explosive factors. The Fed has been raising interest rates, but that's not enough. They tried this in 99 right before the collapse, but it was too late. 
And actually, it almost never works. Right now, war and inflation are pushing the whole economy down. The Nasdaq just declined 28% and did it faster than in 2000. So is the Armageddon coming? Or is there a Bruce Willis coming to save us? Let's start with the good news. We might avoid the mayhem for two main reasons. First, in the late 90s, nobody looked at metrics like profits or sales when judging a company. It was all about hype, even more than today. Tech IPOs had outrageous returns, like six or even 700% in a single day. Nowadays, people understand what the internet really is. Kind of. What I'm trying to say is tech companies tend to have better business plans these days. And VCs do a bit more diligence before throwing money at new startups. Okay, second reason. Today, there's a lot of room for growth. Every company is essentially turning into a tech company. Everything has an app, like even when it doesn't make sense to have an app. Have you ever had to download an app to park your car? It's getting ridiculous. But beyond pointless apps filling your phone, there are entirely new technologies and platforms being built right now. Cloud computing, AI, VR, healthcare, electric cars. Tech is just going to get bigger, solve more problems, and make more money in the long term. But are we actually safe and sound? Not even close because there's another tsunami on the horizon. And if you work in tech, brace yourself. The tech industry is stumbling, and that means a lot of casualties. Let's put it like this. Amazon, Meta, Coinbase, Microsoft. Now take Y Combinator. It's one of the most successful startup accelerators of all time. They gave us companies like Airbnb and Coinbase. Recently, Y Combinator sent an email advising all startups to plan for the worst. Basically, whoever's aiming to raise money should change their plan because things are about to get bleak. Even the money printer that is Google just warned their employees they better shape up quickly or blood will be spilled. The market right now is unpredictable, and when companies look at unpredictable, they see dangerous. But strangely, at the same time, we're in the middle of one of the hottest job markets ever. It sounds like a joke, but it's true. In tech, hiring reached all-time highs, and candidates are snapped up in weeks. But yet over 39,000 people have been sacked this year. How can that even be? Well, one reason is we might be living in the past, let me explain. According to The Economist, after the dot-com bubble burst in 2000, it took a year before work started disappearing in tech. So maybe we're still benefiting from the boom of the past few years and we don't even know it. I hope not. It appears to me that even though many companies are cutting down on staff, there's still a huge shortage of tech talent. Remember, every company is becoming a tech company. Companies who've been looking for workers for the past year are simply now able to hire people who used to work at these high growth, exciting businesses before the money dried up. But no matter what, the sector is changing. We might avoid a mayhem like 2000, but this crisis is causing natural selection. It is adapt or die. Take Netflix, one of the greatest victims here. They fired over 450 people and aren't stopping. That's because they realized their business model of shared accounts and billionaire investments was played out. That model only works in a boom period. Eventually money dries up and you need to show the world you can actually produce consistent profits. Companies who fail to change their business models will be the ones to collapse. What I see with the tech market is very similar to the crypto market. I think if we looked at tech or crypto as these separate islands, unaffected from the rest of the financial world, then we could confidently say that they're oversold and now's the time to buy. But the world doesn't work that way. Everything's connected now. Here's my word. We never saw a collapse in price of regular non-tech, non-growth companies. I'm talking about the boring stuff like pipelines, trash collectors, insurance, builders. Those stocks haven't gone down much, but in a true market crash, they will fall too. My theory is that's our biggest risk. Even though tech and crypto had these massive sell-off events, regular stocks haven't. If regular stocks get hit, you can bet that tech and crypto get hit even harder. Now, it is possible that regular stocks don't even get hit this time around. Maybe all the money that was pumped into the system will keep those from dropping. But my point is, it's possible. Will this be worse than 2000? Probably not. But we shouldn't take those risks lightly. Now from here you might be wondering, what safe stuff can I even invest in? Well, I got you covered with this video on recession-proof ETFs. It's a must watch.